just quickly before we start, if there's any questions of what you'd like to ask me in terms of like my whole wrestling career, leave them in the comments and I'll either get to them in the next video or if there's enough, I'll make a new video out of it. So I'm a complete idiot, aren't I? I recorded this, well, more or less three quarters of this video and I forgot to hit record on the, uh, on the computer. So I'm going to sit through it again just for you guys. Show you how dedicated I am. And uh, one of the <laughs> probably the only entrance of uh, of the Neo Prophecy not coming out and shouting like the generic <laughs> generic hills. Andy Andy loves a good shout at the camera though. Uh, those two kids on the on the on the front had actually bought my T-shirts. Um, I had um, I had about five made, which was just like a little a, a kind of coloured um, uh, silhouette of what my hairstyle used to be which you'll see in a second. Uh, I, I made them I made them for the uh, uh, for the Warsaw Town Brawl show that we all that all the rest of us chipped in. I've got nothing out of money wise. And uh, I think I sold like three, I had two left over, I just had to get rid of them because I was changing my gimmick which comes at the end of this match. And um, I needed to get rid of them. <laughs> I think I, I think I priced them first at like seven quid and I was like I'll just stick them at four, just get rid of them hopefully. And bless them, those two kids on the side bought them, and I felt really bad because they weren't they weren't going to be like in tune with the times for a very long. So this was actually Kid Flash. Uh, this was actually Craig's version, Kid Flash. Um, he stopped wrestling for us um, like the month before this show. So we had to figure out a way to get rid of the belts off of me. Um, and onto like an actual tag team. Um, reasons personal to, to, to Craig. I didn't agree with them. Um, I thought it was an absolute shame of why of why he left. Uh, but he decided to leave. Rain Supreme. Come on, Dan. You can do this. Come on, son. Try and get this crowd excited a little bit. The crowd were awful this show, like really bad. Woo, go me. Woo, such a face. Notice those kids with my shirts on, I went, high five guys. <laughs> I felt so bad. Those weren't going to be current for uh, after, after this match anyway. And uh, someone's actually bought my poster. The poster that uh, Stacks used to sell and gave fuck all to any of the wrestlers. We, we got no money out of the merch. Well, I didn't get any money anyway. I can't, I can't speak for everybody, but I, I got nothing out of it. I think he used to sell it for like two, three quid, and yeah, I thought it was pretty bad. This was uh, Shawn Michaels inspired, taking off the shirt, running to the ring, take a duck, close line him out, plan for this match, stay focused. It's two on one, Dan. Um, basically just get them out, just get them out, get one of them out of the ring one by one and, and, uh, well, I think, I think I only did it once to be fair, because, um, what the heels would be doing would be obviously teaming up on me, they wouldn't be playing by the rules and, um, keeping one outside the ring. Nice, belly to belly. Nice. My favourite one, German. Oi! With a bridge as well. Fucking used to love doing Germans. I don't think anyone else at K-Style used to do suplexes apart from myself. Off the top of my head, as far as I'm aware, they didn't drop kick to take him out. Didn't really roll out very fast. And, uh, God, I'd have been gassed out if I was doing this now. I think I actually was at this point. I was knackered. Had, had, had a little reaction from the crowd there. A very slight reaction. I can't, I can't believe how dead this, this crowd was. The next match... After this one that I'll that I'll be doing. Same place. Same place in King Standing, just the crowd is just shit. They were just really quiet for some reason. As far as I remember, it wasn't just for my match either, it was like for everybody's match. Just the whole show was just really quiet for them. Nice little tag move. I was always nervous about taking that because the ring wasn't very big at all. I think it was only like twelve by twelve. Which a WWE ring is like twenty two by twenty two. So this was just less than, this was just over half of what an actual WWE ring would be. 
and I always got nervous about taking that 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 move because it was obviously taking up the majority of the ring, and I always had a, like a fear of like smacking my head or awkwardly hitting my elbow on uh, on on the wooden apron, like the actual the black bit of of the ring there. It was it it wasn't padded at all. There was nothing there. It was just pure like wooden metal. If if you landed on that, you'd fucking feel it. Weird heart attack. Awful. Yeah, that's that was bad. Distract the ref. Ref, come over here. Why? Don't know. Just come over here. I'll go for the ankle lock. Make him tap as fast as possible. And a uh, slingshot. Which didn't turn out very well either. I think I was far too away from the from the rope. <laughs> oh yes, the tags of what they used to do to each other, that, like an alternative kind of slap across the face. The tag and the way that Andy sold it, like oh right, yeah, like he's enjoying it. The sicko, very close to the ropes. I don't, I don't think he should be counting that. Surely my foot was under. And a reverse fame massa. Oh, decent. That's quite nice. Although who's who's in? Luke's in, isn't he? And again, that's uh, attacking the ref. Shouldn't really attack the ref. Yeah, don't 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 attack the ref. <laughs> What's he pushing him for? Oh, watch that. And I liked it. He ain't nothing. Double negative. So I'm everything. At least I got a bit of the crowd like shouting for me. Come on, Dan. A little bit, kinda. Sebastian Knight's talking to the ref a lot here. Talking a bit too much. Ref move. <laughs> Decent bit of timing. Monkey flip. I used to enjoy doing the monkey flip. Again, no one else. I think Flash used to. But then I think obviously he's not doing it anymore. He quit at this point. Go for the ankle lock again. Make him tap. Come on, tap you little shit. RKO. I never liked taking the RKO. Nothing against Luke. I just thought, because everybody... Everybody at this point, anyway, like 2008, 2009 time, obviously when bloody Randy Orton was using it, everybody on the circuit was. I understand it's like you're trying to get people to know what you're doing, to know what what moves you do, but everybody did the RKO. I I'm I much preferred the just the normal diamond cutter from uh, DDP, but everybody had to jump with it. Old Salvador Hunter makes an appearance. What a treat. I fucking love Jim Hunter so much. Honestly, Jim and Lee Hunter, the greatest, greatest tag team that the UK's ever produced, in my eyes anyway. You Brummies don't deserve anything. Scummy Brummies. <laughs> Some of their lingo of, of what they used to come out with was hilarious. So this was like a, this was a reason for me to like, change up my gimmick um, obviously since Kid Flash left um, there's nothing much well I didn't I didn't want to carry on doing the whole Dan Daniels thing it was just um, just a generic character there's was, there was, there was nothing to it and I wanted to do something more more gimmick based basically so we needed to write it out somehow so I could get rid of this whole Dan Daniel shit and then become more more of a pirate bit of a spoiler there me and Franco got along really well backstage but there's one thing that I was, I was always nervous about was actually wrestling him because in um, cause in training itself I don't get me wrong we, we, we got along really well um, he was just known to be it was just known to be stiff, basically, even in the gym, when he was meant to be training, and you don't take it serious, well, you don't full-on hit people, but he, he worked very snug, and I was very nervous, I put off this match for so long, Carl was like saying to me, yeah, wrestle Franco, wrestle Franco, I was like, I, I don't, I don't want to get fucking injured for no reason, and then when I actually did this match, at the end of it, I genuinely don't know what I was nervous about, he was... He was one of the most nicest people in the ring that I've ever wrestled with. He eight, nine, 
seven times out of ten, he would always make sure that you bump right, that he'd never punch you properly. He would always make it look like he was. Fair play to him. Like he was very good at what he did and made it look believable. This first power bomb, I remember, fucking winded me. I'm pretty sure that first power bomb, like, fucking gassed me out big time. Someone's recording there in the corner, I think. And um, yeah, so I got backstage and I was like, he's actually not that bad as what I thought he was going to be. And Carl went, yeah, I know, he's 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 actually really good. Not that I was expecting him not to be very good. He's been like he's he's been wrestling since like 2001. I think at this point, in terms of the time, st the time scale of K-Star, he was um, one. He was like the second most experienced, outside of um, outside of Carl, who was the lead trainer. Who was the trainer, to be fair? And um, I remember backstage saying to him like, two power bombs, three power bombs. I'm not too sure about the third. We'll see. We'll see how two goes. If I give you any nudges or anything. As in to say, like, no more. Hit me with something else a bit a bit softer. And, uh... He decided to, like... <laughs> oh, he used my... He used my move against myself. <laughs> my hair grew back really fast at that point. Jeez. The back of my hair. I remember cutting it, like, real short. And then, and then I dyed it for the... For the Warsaw Town Brawl show. This was probably November time. As the Warsaw Town Brawl was October, as far as I remember. And um, I, th I think I gave him like a little like tap on the thigh or, or a nudge or something saying I can't take another power bomb. That fucking hurts. The ring isn't as cosy as what you'd expect it to be. It's padded up. 100% it's padded. But it still fucking hurts. That bump was a lot nicer. He, he landed me proper that time. Like the way that I should have been landed. First time gas, second time. I don't think it was that bad but it still hurt. Then uh, oh, those those two kids in the background there with my shirt on. That's it. That is Dan Daniels finished. The history of Dan Daniels is complete. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> oh, I actually I actually remember the kid who's on the corner there now. The one that just came up to the ref. He actually asked if I was all right. Oh, that's one thing I love about wrestling is the kids. The kids obviously at, at that age aren't smart enough to realise that we're actually all friends. Sorry to break any bubbles if anybody's watching and didn't know, but we actually are all friends. And uh, that kid genuinely believed that I was, I was in pain and I was hurt. This is a bit of a cheesy ending. Uh, Robin, wee! And uh, Lee Hunter came out, Lee's Jim's brother. And uh, they came out to help me up. I had this thing in my head of what I wanted to do, like... When I regained consciousness, I wanted to like reach, reach for my sword in the non-sexual manner, reach for my pirate sword. That still sounds weird, you know what I mean? And just be like, "Where is it?" At that point, that's that's where I was clicking, going, "Oh, I'm going a bit mad, Captain Jack." Looking back on it, I, I look really aggressive. Like, leave me alone. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to come across like that anyway. This is a match that I actually really enjoyed. Let me just turn this down quickly, just to be safe. This one has uh, commentary in um, from Carlin, from Carlin Stacks. Don't know how much you can hear from this, but I'll reiterate of what a couple of lines that Carl, uh, not Carl, sorry, that's that Stack said. Stacks always had a little vengeance against me for some reason. He he never liked me. I don't know why. Even the amount of stuff that I did for him for free. I was obviously wrestling on these shows every every month for free. Never. I never got anything from him. Uh, the merchandise of what he sold, he used to do like little key rings. Uh, the DVDs of what I edited and what I made. And the posters as well. And he never gave me a fucking penny. Not that I was expecting it, don't get me wrong, I wasn't doing it for the money. But it was a thing of, you're making money from me, come on, let's... I'm not, I'm not asking 50-50, but saw me out a little bit. Never did. Never gave me a fucking penny, or as far as I'm aware, anybody. This wasn't the Captain Jack debut. If if anybody has any any old matches of mine, like especially from the uh, Captain Jack era, you know, feel free to let me know. I can sort something out with you. But um, this wasn't one of my first match. Well, I think this was one of my first matches as Jack Daniels, but 
No, but definitely not the first. The Terra King Stunner! It was better when we went to Great Bar. Um, we used to have... I used to bring along about 15 people. And again, I, I, I never got thanked once. I used to bring along like 15-something people. And um, that that girl that just came from the side then, um, in the in the white uh, hoodie, she does something really funny later on. The Grey Bar shows, like, between 2009, 2000, probably 11 or something. I used to bring a lot of people. And the atmosphere of when I made my entrance and having them people shout, 15 people, which will start about everybody else. And everyone was just like, hey, Captain Jack, he's so cool. That's what made me love doing. Uh, th that's what made me love doing these K-Star, just wrestling shows in general, I should say. Really. So the story of this match was um, Rigor Mortis. He was meant to be the third guy. It was meant to be a triple threat, but um, they basically had to get the the Midlands Championship from Rigor. And so I can't remember the reason why, but they wanted to put it onto Lee, um, and. The story, well, the story was being was he was locked backstage and yeah, and then it just became a one-on-one. -on -one. That's a cheesy. The belt's mine. I hate when people do that. Don't know why I did it. Aha! Obviously, you can tell that uh, the whole gimmick, <laughs> the whole idea behind the Captain Jack Daniels gimmick was obviously uh, Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean. And um, the Ahaz was from Family Guy. So when Peter became a pirate. The start of this match was, we wanted it to like tell the story of how equal myself and Lee was. I, I, keep, I keep trying to mix between real names and like wrestler names. Uh, and so we basically did what, what, I did, you can, so what I did, you can also do too, so we uh, matched each other completely, that was inspired by Shawn Michaels too, you'll, you'll probably notice that a lot of my stuff, Shawn Michaels um, skin the cap, I've never able to do this, I never had the core muscles to like bring my legs up properly, so Lee probably just saw that there, he had to uh, help me out, <laughs> the referee you'll see, uh, you'll see a fair bit of him. Um, in the next video anyway. I used to love thinking up things of what I could do as a pirate. What what would a pirate do if they were a wrestler? And that was a little cannonball thing. Um, I don't know if I did it then, but I used to shout out, Cannonball! And I used to just do like a, like a flip sent on thing. I used to hate taking these, these forearms to the back coming off the ropes. I never liked taking them because I could never figure out like when, uh, when am I supposed to react? The crowd were amazing to be fair, these kids like proper giving proper giving Lee some stick. I can't tell what can't tell what they're saying, but but yeah, they are quite funny. Oh nice save. Uh, I can't think what that's called. But I think he was meant to land on I'm um, sorry, I was meant to land on his knee. Um I think I overshot it. Or I didn't understand what the fuck it was meant to be. So uh, Lee luckily like saved my ass, so I didn't break my neck and just landed me on my back instead. Fair play to him, thanks. Thanks Lee if you're watching this. I always used to love working with Lee, I mean, we worked with each other a fair bit in the gym. And uh, we never really wrestled each other much on the shows, unfortunately. I think this was the only time, the only time that we actually ever did. We had a very like similar style to each other. Shawn Michaels, yes. Sure, Michael style that was. Lost me balance. <laughs> Had to push himself back. Because me and Lee's favourite wrestler was HBK. And we used to do as much as what we could of his stuff within our matches. Like separately, and then obviously now that we're wrestling each other, this match was like heavily. Heavily uh, Shawn Michaels orientated. The kids, the yeah, kids at the front are brilliant. Again, the one in the white, the the girl in the white uh, hoodie. You'll you'll see her react really nicely in a bit. Tyler does like a Ric Flair style. 
Into the top rope. And a nice C bone. Or uh, belly to belly, I mean. Decent. And then, uh, I don't know if you can hear, but stacks on the commentary is going. Dan, uh, Captain Jack Daniels lost his footing. No, I didn't. Well, I probably did slightly, but nobody saw it. Still has to put it up because he's a dick. He, uh, Stacks always had to try and try and make me look as stupid as possible. Keeping in mind, like a month or two after this, all the wrestlers have basically banded together and just told him to leave. He was such a cock. Tebow, yes, nice. German, nice. Fucking love that with the bridge too. Regular suplex. Into a fireman's carry, standing fireman's carry, and a fucking flapjack. And I remember that completely winded the shit out of me. Couldn't breathe. Could not breathe for like a solid ten seconds. I remember actually telling him like, "Gotta leave me alone. I feel sick. I can't breathe." I said to him, "Just, just, just do something for ten seconds. I, I can't breathe, mate." Oh. If you've ever been like kicked or punched in the stomach, and yeah, that's what it, that's what it feels like. Not very comfortable. Pirates hanging. I wanted to keep my um, I wanted to keep my submissions. <laughs> it's a shout. Come on. I wanted to keep my submissions, so I did like a like a cross. No, not cross. It was, it was I don't know. It's like a chicken wing or something. I don't know. And. I put it and I told them as soon as I put it on, come out straight away. Um, I didn't want to put him into that too much because it looked stupid otherwise. And I was there shouting, come on! I finally came out, grabbed my uh, flag. Fucking RKO again. And my, uh, and my waist thing kept on coming down. Here we go. The story, right, so the story behind that, right, was um, I obviously couldn't sell it too much. I had to take that finisher, and then I had to crawl up the um, the ropes. Obviously quite slow. But then you've got on the uh, commentary, Stacks going, Oh, Captain Jack Daniels miraculously gets up, and I don't know how he's doing this, but he's basically trying to slag me off, going, Oh, he doesn't know how to sell me. I could fucking... I was... He's a twat. And then sweet chin, done. One, two, three, and I remember lying there now, going, "Shit, it's happening." I can try and quickly explain the situation. So, about this week, uh, this was in my, this was at the end of my first week of uni, and I, and I wanted to cut my hair, and I and I didn't know how to do it. I was thinking, I'll somehow do it in the ring. Why not? I've got a show on Saturday. This was like a week or so before, and. Um, I wanted Salvador Hunter to do it and I remember asking him backstage and he went no I'm sorry mate but I can't do it because he has long hair too and he was like I'm sorry I can't I can't cut someone else's long hair because I know how much of a pain in, I know how much of a pain in the ass it is to actually grow I, I'm sorry but I can't do it I thought, oh, go on mate please and no uh, okay so then I asked um, Lee backstage and he went yeah of course I can straight away didn't even didn't even question it he just went yeah I put that fucking flag over me like I died. I never understood that. <sighs> this is the very last bit of uh, K Star for me. DVD exclusive. <laughs> Don't know why I put it as the DVD exclusive. So, um. This was it. This was goodbye to my hair. Decided to cut it off. Main reason, because I, well, several main reasons. One main, main reason was I was just bored of it. I mean, it's such a pain in the ass to, to like, take care of, look after. And, um, third main reason was just, I was at uni, I felt it was holding me back with the ladies. So I decided to, like, chuck it off me. And they put that flag over me, I was just like, I don't know what you did that for. That looks stupid. So that, <laughs> that chlorophyll of what loot's got over me, it was just a, it was just a baby wipe from backstage. Why are they doing this for? Crowd goes mental. It's this this girl here. This girl here goes mental. She's so funny. Watching this DVD back and just looking at her, her, her reactions 
Um, I think it was her that, that shouted, um, he's going to be so angry when he wakes up. <laughs> so I wanted um, Salvador Hunter to do it, but he wouldn't do it. And then I asked Lee, and he just went straight away, yeah, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> the kids in the audience, that's his hair. Just look at look how shocked she is. Look how shocked. <laughs> Can't believe they're doing this. And that's all they did, more or less. They left. So much hair. It... I remember that they left it so it was like pretty much a bowl cut and then I had to cut it a bit shorter backstage then, I, then the next morning when I woke up I said to my mum because my mum was in bed by the time I got back that that, that night and uh, I woke up in the morning and up and she was outside and just pointed out to her going mum can you sort my hair out for me just shave it off properly it was all in this weird bowl cut and bits were like hanging Longer than what they should. He looks so stupid. <laughs> oh, he cut his hair. That's so yum yum. <laughs> Give it up for Jack Daniels. I know King Sanding would have. But that was it. That was my. Uh, that was all my time in K Star that I have anyway. Record any any ray anyway recorded. There's a nice long bit of my hair just right in front of my eyes. You could have made a better job out of it. I think I think people did help me backstage and actually cut it a bit better. But um, that's it. That's my that's my time in K Star. Um, there's a few more matches outside of K Star that I'm going to go over in the next couple of videos. But I think that's pretty much it. What I was going to say, the means to say, um, over the last couple of videos was actually if you've got any wrestling questions of what you'd like me to go over, um, I have write them in the comments. Depending on how many there are, if there are any, then I'll uh, I'll. Um, I'll make a separate video or I'll just answer them in the next in the next video, I don't know. 